the, the meals need to be done. Oh my goodness, it's taxes. You know, there's so many things out there. My kids are sick. This is going on. My, you know, the car is broken. There's so many things that seem to press us down, press us down, press us down. And you know, this is our opportunity when we come into the house of God to get rid of all of that junk. Push all that junk yes. out away from amen, us amen. and enter in unto God. Because you know what? When you enter in, He will give you rest. He will give you rest so that when you go back out those doors, you can stand again another day. I mean, we come together that we can draw strength from one another and from God and that we can bless Him and that we can lift up our hands in the sanctuary that we can praise Him and give Him honor and glory. If everyone for, for just one minute could just concentrate on God, if you would just lift your hands right now, just lift your hands and, and try to push aside all the things that are out there that's pressing your mind this day. Just push them out and only think of God and His goodness. Oh, precious mighty Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, mighty God. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you, mighty Jesus, for strength, for giving me the ability to endure that which is before me. Oh, I praise you, mighty God. I thank you, Jesus, for the comforter that you have sent to lead me and to guide me into all truth. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I praise you this day, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I praise you, Jesus, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, you are gracious and kind and merciful. And you are truth, Lord God. Oh, I praise you. Oh, let every man be a liar, but God is truth. Oh, I praise you, Lord Jesus. I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you so much. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I am just so stirred up in my spirit this morning. I was, I, I am such a procrastinator. <laughs> it is so bad. I am such a procrastinator. And as everyone has known me my whole life, I'm five minutes late for everywhere I go. Everything. Well, come on, do you agree with me? You're my sister. You're supposed to agree with me. I am, I mean, it's, it's just me. And that's wrong. I can say, oh, that's just me. But you know what? I have the power to change that. I have the power to change that. If I don't ever want to be late again, I don't have to be late. I even set, this is the honest truth, my watch is set five minutes fast. And what, the clock in my car is 15 minutes fast. Because I know inevitably I am going to be late. And, I, and there's no reason for it. No reason other than the fact that I've got this habit going on and I've had this habit going on forever and ever and ever. And I just, it's like this rut, you know. You just seem to just, you know when you try to get out of a rut, it's kind of hard. It's so easy. When you're in a rut, I mean, when you're in a rut and you're going down, I mean, you just, it's so smooth. I mean, you just go down, there's no conflict, there's no problems. It's like, ooh, this is all right. But when you try to get out of a rut, you get thrown this way, thrown that way. It's, it's really difficult. It's so much easier to stay in that rut. But you know what? You can go farther and get more places if you get out of the rut. You can only go where the rut goes. That's right. You can only go where the rut goes. But once you're out of that rut and you're on flat ground, you can go anywhere you want to go. I mean, face it, a train is only going to go where that track leads him. He's not going to say, hmm, I think I'll go over on this street. It's not going to happen. He is only going to go wherever the track sets him. So much of the time, we are in a rut, and we're happy in that rut, and we're going down that rut, and this rut's making everything easy. And you know what? Sometimes you got to change your way of thinking. Sometimes you got to do things differently to get things done. You know, I, I, I have had a very, very stressful three weeks with, with Sister Debbie and, and her dad and the sickness that he's in, and, and Brother Charlie and the sickness that he was in. And, and I don't know how many of you are aware of, of what they endured last weekend, but on Saturday was the uh, visitation service for, for Brother Ailes. And, and Debbie was there, and Charlie was there about 15 minutes, and he got really sick and had to go home. Well, Wayne went to check on him, and when he did, he was so sick. So he came back and got Mom and Elsie and Dennis, and they went back over, and he ended up taking him to the hospital. And here's poor Debbie at the funeral home with her dad laying in state, and her husband's in the hospital. And when she got to the hospital, 
He was just so sick. So sick. And you know, here she's trying to endure everything that's going on. And you know, I stayed there. I went home and I came back and I stayed with her for a while. And I went home with her till she got to bed and, and, and was almost asleep. Then I left. And then Sunday again, you know, we went and we picked up Charlie and we went to the funeral home. And he went to the funeral home and, and he went to the, you know, went out to the graveside and he got so sick they had to take him back to the hospital and they put him back in the hospital again. And I want you to understand, his sickness is not like, oh man, I've just got a headache. Saturday night they gave him four shots of morphine, enough to knock out four That's men, killing. never touched him. Wow. They took him upstairs and put him on a morphine drip machine. And before we left, I know that Debbie gave him seven shots of morphine before we left, before he could finally go to sleep. I mean, you and I, I would probably stop breathing at that amount of morphine. But this is what it takes to get him through this condition that he's in. On Sunday, when we had to take him back, it was even worse. I, and, and you know, we sat in that emergency room, and I watched him, and I was so proud to be called a Christian. He stood there, and Debbie held his hand, and they prayed, and they spoke in tongues, and she prayed. And you know what? Never once, never once did I hear him complain. You know what I heard come out of his mouth? Oh, touch me, Jesus. Oh, touch me, Jesus. Heal me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. I know you can do it, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Those are the words that came out of his mouth. Believing, no matter what comes my way, my God is able. And you know, and I know God is able. I don't understand. I can tell you. Sister Terry and I looked at each other and we don't understand. But you know what? It doesn't matter if I understand. That's right. You know what matters? Is that God is God. He is in control. Regardless of what comes before us, right. we still have to believe. I believe in him. <clears throat> Sister Debbie and I were having a conversation at her house after everything on Saturday night after we left and Charlie and he finally got to sleep and and I was telling you that I had spoke to someone the last couple of weeks that said, you know, I just don't even know if I believe in God anymore. Because you know what? I've prayed and I've prayed to ask Him to do things for me, and He hasn't seen fit to do anything for me. And I said, you know what? <laughs> you don't understand. Every, he takes care of you every day of your life. Every day of your life, yes, He sir. takes care Your's of you. Breath, you, you know, he, he gives you everything that you have. And, and you know what their response was? I do it. I work a job. I pay my bills. I do everything. I've heard that before. And, and you know what? This person loves God. I know this person loves God. But you know what? This person is so disillusioned. Because this world can make you disillusioned. This world can say, if God be God, then make him do something. What was it Satan said? If you be God, turn these stones into breath. If you be God, jump down from off of this pinnacle and, and it says the angels will lift you up unless you dash your foot against a stone was it not Satan that continually buffeted Jesus and you know what he is doing the very same sure. thing today sure. his technique has not, not changed not change at all. his technique has not Amen. changed you know he wants so much to get you to be disillusioned in God yes. because if he can disillusion you he's got you won over I mean, and I know this person. I know this person. And I know that deep down within their heart, they love God. They just don't know how to get back to Him. Because they're seeking for a sign. They're seeking for a sign. And there shall be no sign given. Amen. That's exactly what He said. It's what Jesus told them. They're seeking for a sign. And there shall be no, no sign, sign given either. them. What did He tell Thomas? Thomas, you believe because you see the nail prints in my hand. You believe because you have thrust your hand in my side. You believe because you see. Greater. Greater are those that come after that believe and see me not. Greater are they. Can you imagine this day? You. You sitting in this seat. Believing in God. Are greater than Thomas. And John. And Peter. All of those. And they believe because they saw. Greater are those that believe and see me not. Right. Amen. We believe out of absolute faith. Right. That's right. Amen. Not because of what he can do for you. That's right. Amen. Not because of what you have seen. That's right. Not because of what you have heard. But because you know that he is God. Amen. 
It's called a faith thing. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. This is a faith thing. Not because you see it, not because you heard it, not because you smelled it, not because you touched it. Because you know it. Because you know that 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 you know. And that's what Sister Debbie and I were talking about. You have to come to that place that you know that you know that you know that you know that you know, no matter what comes against you. And that's not an easy place to get to. And I'm sure it's not an easy place for Brother Charlie to have no. to walk in. I'm sure that Sunday, when they was putting her dad in the grave, and she was taking her husband to the hospital, it was not an easy place for Sister Debbie to walk in. Here is a man. Brother Els loved God. He served God with all of his heart. I've known the man for some 23 years. I, he, he baptized my children. I mean, I know the man. I know what he stood for. Yeah. A loving man that would give his left arm for you if yeah. that's what it took. Yeah. And I'm sure Debbie's saying, but Lord, he's just a young man. He has so much work to do. Yeah. But yet, you know what? She has to stand and believe that God is all-powerful, yeah. that he is in control, and that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered Order of the, the Lord. Lord. It does not matter what I see with my eye. That's it's right. what I know in my spirit. That's right. My spirit tells me oh, that he's gone on to a better place. Yes, what is it? Uh, what is it here that uh, Paul says? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love His appearing. Do you understand? It was not just for Paul. It was for Brother Ailes. Yeah. It was Absolutely. for Brother Ailes. Sure. It was for Sister Helen. Sure. All those that loved him and walked with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Absolutely. They have just passed from this life to a better place. Amen. Amen. They have just crossed on over. Thank you, Jesus. You know, they, they've attained. They have gotten to that Thank place. God. We're still striving to make it. Yes. Amen. You know, I'm... I'm I watch the things that some people go through, and you know, it just strengthens you. It encourages you. You do not understand. No. I can't stand here and tell you. I'd be lying through my teeth if I said, I absolutely understand and agree with everything that God has done in the last few years. Oh, God. I, no, no, wrong. No. I don't. I don't understand, no. and I don't always agree with Him. No. But you know what? It doesn't matter no, if I agree with Him. Right. He's God. He's God. <laughs> what are you going to do? Amen. What are you going to do? You are going to trust Him. You're going to believe that His Word is true. And that He is God and that He is in control. Because I truly believe, and I know I quote this scripture almost every time I stand in this podium, but I cannot help it. All things work together for the good. Do you understand what that means? All things work together for the good. That's for your good and 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 your good. Every one of us, because that's the kind of God He is. He will take every situation and turn it around for our good. For our good. If right. we are the call according to His purpose. Do you understand? You are the call according to His purpose. He has a plan. He has a purpose for each and every one of you. From the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb, He said, Ooh, Sister Carol, I've got here. We'll just write this plan down. This is what I have planned for Sister Carol. Oh, she did a detour. Oh, you know what? We'll just get her right back, of course. Because that's the kind of God He is. He has a purpose for each and every one of us. And sometimes we, in our flesh, step outside that plan. Because we are free will agents. Every one of us are free will agents. Absolutely. And we can go whithersoever we want, right. say whatever we want, sure. do whatever we want. Amen. And you know, we have the ability to take our hand, ourself, out of His hand. Out of his hand. But you know what? Even when kicking and screaming, we jump out of His hand, He's right there with the other one to catch us. Sure, we might not make it from point A to point B. We might have to take a detour from point A to point Z. But ultimately... If you trust in Him and believe in Him and you talk to Him and you ask Him to lead you and guide you, you will get to point Z. Amen. It's a fact. Yeah. Without a doubt, you're going to get there. Amen. How you get there is uh, you can, can uh, detour here and detour here and detour here and detour here. City, and right? life can be very difficult. Or you can find that place in Him and follow that plan. Amen. And I'm not saying that life's going to be rosy. Oh, 
Oh. Everything's wonderful. I'm so happy. I'm never sick. My bills are always paid. I'm financially secure. <laughs> Not going to happen in this world. Not if you're walking around in this flesh. But you will have peace. I'm telling you, that is the most important oh, thing to me. Yes, to know yes, that I have peace to get through Hallelujah. each and every step of yes, the way. Yes, yes. I have peace. That when, I, when, when conflict comes against me, when struggle is in my face, and the door seemingly is slamming every other day, I know that God is in control. I know He is in control, and I know that He can work everything out for my good. Because that's the kind of God I serve. Loving and compassionate. And I say those words a lot but because I have to, to, to speak what I believe. I know that He is in control. You know... Sister Debbie and them have endured so much, yet they stand, and they stand, and they stand. And you know why they stand? Because they know that 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 they know. Because there is something planted deep within them that says, my God is in control, and there is a reason for all things. What are you going to do? Where could you go? Exactly. What it was, was it that, that Jesus said, uh, are you going to leave me? And, and Peter said, where am I going to go, Lord? <laughs> Where am I going to go? You and you alone have the words of right. life. What am I going to, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? That's right. That's right. Once you truly know Him, Amen. and I absolutely believe this, and Sister Debbie and I were talking, you know, once you know Him, truly deep down within your soul know Him, you understand there is nowhere else to go. You are Peter. And you know, even after Peter said those things, whenever they came and got Him, and, and took Jesus away. What did Peter do? He denied. He denied him three times. I don't know that man. I never saw. I was never about him. I don't know him. I'm telling you, woman, I never talked to the man. I don't know him. I mean, he was adamant. He stood, swore the oath. I never knew that. I never had anything to do with them people. I mean, because he was afraid in his flesh. Oh yes. And that is just showing you. We are flesh. We all fall on our face. We all say things. This person that said, I don't even know if I believe in God anymore. They were saying it out of fear, out of disillusionment, yes. out of just not having a true understanding of God. Yeah. Peter fell on his face. Sure, yeah. Peter fell on his face many times. It's just getting back up. Amen. That's what matters. You know, and, uh, <clears throat> many of you know that, that Brother Tim likes to race cars. He's... He, He's raced oval track for a long, long time and kind of beat his body up so much he couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> and so he drag racing so you can just like that rut, you know, you get on that track and you go straight ahead <laughs> as fast as you can. <laughs> and so I, I, I like race cars. I like racing. And, and for some reason or other, I couldn't get this out of my head, you know. It says we run a race, each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking how, how each person that gets in that race car, you know, Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon and... Dale Earnhardt Jr., I know, it should have been Jeff Gordon first, right, Sister Carol? I'm sorry. <laughs> Tim's the same way. He's an yeah, All of those men, Ward Burton, each and every one of those, you know, each man that gets in that car and they strap up, what is their intention when they get in that car? When? I'm coming in last today. Uh, that may be. That may happen. <laughs> they may not even finish at all. That's right. We don't even get started. <laughs> But you know what? They get in that car, they suit up, and you know what? They're not out there by themselves. Do you think that Jeff Gordon is the mechanic, the body man, the gas man, the tire man? I mean, do you think he does all those things all by himself? No way. He could not get the job done. You cannot be out there all alone. No, you can't. If you think that you can serve God all by yourself and don't no, need anybody can't. else's no, help, no, no, no. you're wrong. No, no. You may use this word and say, I can do it all by myself, but it's not going to happen. No. I don't need to come to church. I don't need anybody's help to serve God. I have a relationship, just me and God. Just me and God. You know what? You need help from someone. From someone. Because if you never hear a testimony, right. you never hear encouraging words, right. if all you ever do is live in this world as it is today and try to have a relationship between you and God, it, I personally do not see how it's possible. I don't either. Because you have to have words of encouragement from those around you. When Jeff Gordon gets in his car and he straps up and he checks out all the gauges and he starts up that car 
and they're all standing, and they're all there, and they're behind the pace car, and they're going. Anticipation, anticipation. Right. I'm going to yeah. win this race, I'm going to win this race, I'm going to win this race. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. When that pace car pulls off, and they go at it, yeah. you better bet their intention is, I'm winning this race, yeah. don't get in my way. Right. <laughs> and you know what? When the tires start getting bad, and the gas tank gets a little bit low, do they go out there and say, I gotta pull in the pits and I gotta put my tires on, I gotta get gas out? Are they gonna win the race? Nope. No way. Because you cannot do all of those no, things. You, you have to have help. Yes, you do. Amen. What do you think is gonna to happen to that man when he pulls in that pit and the, and the tire man says, I don't wanna be the tire man today, I wanna to be the gas man. I don't wanna be the tire man. You're not gonna make me be the tire man. If they're looking for a new job, I'll tell you. What are his chances of winning the race if the tire man standing out there saying, I don't want to be the tire man. I don't want to be the tire man. <laughs> Not going to be very good. you got to have a good pit crew if you're going to win a race. Work together, that's it. Teamwork. Teamwork. Jeff Gordon was one of the fastest pit crews there was. You know what? You get in there, you want to get in there and less like 14 seconds to do in and out. You get in there and somebody gives you 21 seconds in the pit, you are not a happy man. And if you lose that race because your pit crew did not do their job, you are not going to be happy with that pit crew. Everybody has a job to do. Everyone has a job to do. Do you realize the word says that the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us unto all truth? You know what? When they're out there on that track and they're going around, they have spotters all around the track. There's somebody all around that track and they're watching. And you know what? They'll say, go left, go right, go high. You know, slow down. There's crash in front of you. Over on this side. Over. And you're constantly listening. You are listening so that you will be guided That's on right. that race. Yes. Because you know right. what? Right. That spotter can see in front of you what's going to happen. That's right. You can't. That's right. you ever, did you see the crash last week, Sister Carol? Oh, yes. 18 cars. Bam, 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 bam. All gone. Now, you know what? You can bet when that first car crashed yeah. that that spotter was on there. Hey, so-and-so's crashed. Get down here. Get down here. Go this way. Go that way. No, turn this way. Go this way. And they was listening, buddy. You better bet they was listening. Uh -huh. Because they want to know, where do I go now? Where do I go now? Because I want to win this race. I want to make it to the end. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't matter how much they tell you. Some things that other people do is going to follow you. No matter how much you follow after God, no matter how much you're listening, sometimes things that other people do is going to make a reflection on your life. Face it, Sister Debbie loves God with her whole heart. Yes. But you can bet that the death of her father, the illness of her husband, is doing something to her. Yes. Yes, it will. You know, and that's why we have to lift up the hands of those who are weak. When others are being pressed down, what is our job? You can bet, you know what, when those 18 cars crash, they didn't pull them all off to the side and send them to, some of them got into the pit, got their cars worked on. I mean, they, they weren't winter cars, but they was going to go back out there. Finish. You better bet they was going back. I don't care if I finish 40 seconds. Yeah. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to finish this race. If there is anything, any way possible, I'm going to finish this race. Amen. And you know what? That's our goal today. Amen. You've got to finish this race. It doesn't matter what happens in front of you. It doesn't matter if you have a flat tire. It doesn't matter. If, if the, you, you hit the wall and the whole side of your car has gone, come back into that pit, man. Get into that pit. Yeah. Get that help. Get those tires changed. Yeah. Get that gas in there. Let them body men come out there and do their job. Uh -huh. You've got to come into the house of God that you can be restored. Oh, amen. Amen. This is a storehouse. Is. Uh -huh. This is a place of revival. Amen. This is a place to strengthen you. Yes. And you know what? If you never come, if you never enter in, how can you be strengthened? It, it says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And how can they hear unless someone preach? Now, that's the word of God here, guys. Faith cometh by hearing, so you've got to be able to hear. And hearing by the word of God, so you've got to hear the word of God. And the word of God comes forth because someone preaches it. I don't, ever have to, I don't have to go to church. I don't ever have to listen to anything. It's just between me and God. Uh, 
that's not exactly biblical no, here. No, it is not. The Word of God says to come into the house, come into the storehouse, yeah. that you might gain strength. Yeah. Assemble yourselves together, even more so, Amen. as you see the time that's appear. Right. And I don't know about you, but this world is getting more and more wicked every day. Every day, they say. Now, we have to learn to be tolerant and accepting of different ideals. Uh, wrong! <laughs> I have to love the sinner, but I don't have to love That's the right. sin. Amen. Amen. I have to love the sinner, and I have yes. to be compassionate, and I have to be kind-hearted, tender-hearted. I have to have a meek spirit as far as when I'm uh, confronted with things. But you know what? I don't have to agree with them. I don't have to say, oh, yes, honey, I do understand that this is, I mean, you had a bad life. You had the right to murder 27 people. I, no, you don't. No, you don't. You know. I'm sorry that your life was horrible, and I will pray that God will restore you and give you peace and give you understanding that you can ask forgiveness. But, you know, you don't have to say, oh, you had a bad life, it's okay, go and kill 27 people. I'm sorry, not happening. You love the sinner, but you don't love the sin. You do not have to condone sin. You do not have to be tolerant of sin. Evil, mean-speaking people you do not have to agree with. It says, you'll know my disciples because they have love, love one to another. Love one to another. You'll know them because they will be loving and compassionate. They'll not be judgmental. Now, you don't have to say, oh, that stupid idiot, I'll tell you. They'll all take him out and kill him. Now, you might want to feel like that. Sometimes you feel that way, right? You do. I'm sorry. If you are flesh, if you're walking around in this, this flesh and bone, blood body, you're going to get angry and you're going to have an opinion. But you know what? You kind of have to keep it in control of God. You have to ask Him to come in and lead you and guide you and give you the words to speak and give you the manner to speak them because I'm going to tell you right now, you win a whole lot more flies with honey than you do vinegar. You draw people to you because you are compassionate and loving and kind and merciful. And why can I say that? Because that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is loving and kind and compassionate and merciful. And to be Christian means to be Christ-like. And to be Christ-like means we need to be like Christ, which means you need to be compassionate and merciful and gracious and kind. Those things have to come out. If the only thing that's coming out at this point in time, is negativity, doubtful disputations. I think that's how it's said. Uh, I, I, I read that somewhere. <laughs> if you're continually arguing, and I mean you never have any peace, and I mean you're just ready to duke it out all the time, then you know what? You need to check your house. Yes, amen. You've gotten yourself in a rut, and we can get in all kinds of. I'm in a late rut, man. You know, I'm, and, and it's my own fault. I cannot say, well, God just made me this way, and I'm going to be late for the rest of my life. I'm always going. To, don't have to be late the rest of my life. I don't have to be late. I can make changes. But you know what? I have to be willing and wanting to make changes. If you are willing and wanting to make changes, you'll make changes. You know what? If a race car driver came in and said, forget it. I know exactly how my car is going to be. I don't want this carburetor. I want a two-barrel carburetor because I think a two-barrel carburetor is going to just work. They're going to look at him like, are you nuts? That's not going to work. I don't, want, I don't want Goodyear tires. I just want P52s on the back of it because I think they're pretty. <laughs> I think they're pretty and they'll look good. And the tire man's going to go, uh, yeah, huh? I'm not going to win your race. I don't want that kind of gasoline. I want to go to Swifties or I want to go to Marathon and I want to buy their gas for my race car because I like the guy that works down there. Uh, that gasoline is not going to work with that motor and it's not going to win the car. You know what? You cannot be so totally bullheaded that everything has to be my way. That's right. Because if it is, even like in a race car driver, everybody has to work together. Amen. You have to work together. The tire man knows his job. He can do it this quick, in, out, in, out, in, out. The gas man knows his job. Get in, get it out, get out of the way. And I've seen a few that didn't do their didn't job well. Didn't get out of the way. 
And when they didn't get out of the way, they got ran over. That's right. So, whether it was his fault for not getting out of the way or the driver's fault for being too rambunctious, we all have a part to play. We all have things that we have to do. And no man is a world unto himself. No one is a world unto themselves. We are not going to get through this on our own. I need you in my life to help lead me and guide me and show me the way. You are my pit crew. Do you understand that? And hopefully I'm a good tire man or I'm a good gas man or if I just have to be the guy that washes the window, you know, and out. If that's my only job, thank you, Jesus. I want to do it well. I want to do it well. Do you understand? I don't have to be the driver. I don't care if I'm Jeff Gordon. I don't care if I'm Del Earnhardt Jr. I don't care if I'm Tony Stewart. I don't care if I'm Ward Burton. It doesn't matter to me if I'm the driver of the car because I guarantee you, the driver's car is not the most important one. No. The crew chief is not the most important one. Each and every one that does their job working together is the most important one. Whatever God has for you to do today, you're the most important one. If He has called you to the ministry, that's your job. If He has called you to be a prayer warrior, that's your job. If He has called you to be a singer, that's your job. How do I know what He's called me? If you would seek His face, He'll let you know what He's called you to do. Each and every one of us has a job to do. And we do that job well when we work together. You don't win a race all by yourself. And you're not going to win this race all by yourself. That's right. James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to them that love him. Amen. Each and every one of us have, that are in this house today, we are sitting here in flesh and bone and blood, and we have not attained that promise. We are striving every day to get to that point. Every day of our life. We are trying to make a difference right. that we get closer and closer and closer to Him. Yes. Brother Els has attained that place. Amen. He has went on. I believe that he is walking with God. He is at peace right now. You know what? We're still striving every day. Right. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. You know what? Jeff Gordon doesn't go out there and he did not go and race the, five, the Daytona 500 last week and say, Oh, that's not a race I ever have to win. I don't have to do anything else. I, don't, I mean, he didn't. And you know what's so amazing? There was like 10 laps, and then my stupid VCR kicked off, and I didn't get to see it. You know what it is to watch an oh, entire yes. race? Yes. At the 10th lap, he was out front, and it went, <coughs> turned off. My stupid timer turned off. You didn't want to see the rest of it. Yeah. Well, you know what was so great? was really good is I turned the news on, and it showed that little clip right there that I missed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I told Tim, I said, let's try the news real quick. And we flipped it over. And there it was, the sports came on. And they showed exactly what happened. I said, oh, I'm so... Because <laughs> I really want to see it. But I didn't really want to see when they when Jeff got cocky. And he did get cocky, since we're I'm sorry. <laughs> and he, he tried to... When he tried to... Oh, uh, keep, Yeah. He tried to, to get the guy not to go around him when he did... He's just trying to balk him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he job. and he didn't win the race. <laughs> he didn't win the race. But the other guy didn't either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so just when you... Think, I mean, we thought these are they, my boys on the home stretch, my guys coming in, man, ten left. Uh -huh. uh -huh. He's Don't got ever it. do that. Oh, we knew he was on his way. I've seen it happen on the last lap. And then there it was on the news. He didn't make it. He came in like eighth place or something. I, was it nine? I was so sad. I said, No, no, no! You can't do this. How can you do this? But you know what? Guess what? He's getting his car ready. He's getting in that car sure. today. He's going to run away. Because That's you know right. what? Yeah. He knows it ain't over. One more over. valley. One more we've got, we've got one more race ahead of us. Yeah. Let's get in there. Let's go. Let's do it. You know what? What was it? Uh, uh, Tony Stewart didn't even make two laps last week. His motor blew up. The motor blew up in his car on the second lap. Do you know how embarrassing? How humiliating and how angry uh, you would be. Yeah. 
But you know what? You can bet that today he is in his car, and you can bet they have checked that motor oh, yeah. three times, yeah, four times, yeah. ten yeah. times. Yeah. It's going to be going today. Because you know what? It's the desire to want to win yeah. the race. Hallelujah. You have to desire, have desire to win the race. You have to desire to be a part of the race. Amen. If you don't have a desire to be a part of the race, you're not going to do your job. Right. And you know what? It's up to each and every one of us to do our part. Amen. Be the best gas man you can. Be the best driver you can. Be the best pit crew chief that you can. Be the best spotter you can. Because I'm going to tell you what, it doesn't matter how good a job the driver does, how good a job the pit crew does, if they don't listen to that spotter, they are going to be in trouble. That's right. That Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth if you will yes, just sir. listen. You all You've listen. got to listen. And you bet He's in every one of your corners. Hallelujah. That Holy Ghost is in every one. He's watching out your every move, so right. everything that has to do with you. Amen. He is there looking out for you. Yes. Because that's His job. <laughs> that's His job. Amen. He's looking out. He's watching for you, leading you and guiding you. you if you'll just have ears to hear. Yes, sir. You just got to have Turn ears to hear. Amen. <clears throat> it says in Philippians 3 and 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Galatians 6 and 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Do you know how many of those guys have been racing year after year after year after year after year, and they've never been the big one. Never they've never won a Winston Cup championship. The big one, that's right. But you know what? They have a desire to yeah, be in right. the race. Yeah, yeah. Who cares if all I ever finish is 10th? Right. Who cares if all I ever finish is 14th? I have a hope that one day I'm going to cross that line Hallelujah. first. Amen. I'm going to be the winner because it's in me. It's in me. I may not be the best. I may not be Kenneth Copeland. I may not be Billy Graham. Uh -huh. I may not be Benny Hinn. But I'm going to tell you what. I do my job, and I do it the best I can. Amen. To others, Hallelujah. Jeff Gordon is the Billy Graham. But you know what? It takes everybody. Yes, it does. You know what? Jeff Gordon, if he was out there all by himself, I'm going to race today. Who's he going to win? Who's he going to beat? That's right. If he's out there all by himself, who's he going to beat? There'd be no race. There'd be no race. That's right. That's right. There's got to be more than one person on the track yeah. to have a race. That's right. You know what? Each person in that race, from the first to the 42nd guy, they're in line. They're ready to go. All run. You know what? They're all running. They're all striving. They all want to cross that finish line. Whether they finish it first or they finish it 42nd, they run the race. They run the race. And that's what matters. Ah! Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Oh, my. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We all have a job to do. We are in a race. There is conflict round about us everywhere. Yeah. Whether it's your finances, whether it's your children, whether it's your family, whether it's your job, whether it's the government that you yeah. don't agree with, uh -huh. the neighbor, the guy down the street, uh -huh. your physical body is yeah. ailing, yeah. it is in pain. We all have conflict in our life, Thank every you. one of us. Yes, yes, every day we are confronted by new things. And every day we seek the guidance right. of God. We seek the guidance of God. We ask that the Holy Ghost would lead us and guide us every day. Yes, that I might speak the right word. That I might say the right thing. That I might do the right thing. That I might be a blessing to those round about me. That my life would so shine that others would see Hallelujah. and that they would want to be a part of Jesus Christ. Yes. That they might want to come to Him because they see something different in Blessed me. Jesus. How many people do you think became race guards because... Drivers because Richard Petty was so good at what he did. Uh -huh. Dale Earnhardt was so good uh -huh. in what he did. They saw these people and they were, they lifted him. Oh man, if I could just drive like he Dale Earnhardt. Him. Man, I'd love to drive like him. I'd like to drive like Richard Petty. Uh -huh. And you have younger people that say, I just want to grow up and drive like Jeff Gordon. Uh -huh. I just want to be like him. 
He's my man because I like his spirit. That's why he's my man. Yeah. <laughs> I like Jeff Gordon because I like his spirit. Yeah. Really good drivers, and I, I, I mean, I, I want them all to win. I really don't have a problem with that. But Jeff Gordon's my man because I love his spirit. Yes. I love what he has to say. I, I, I when his crew chief and them stand and they thank God, yes, I amen. praise God for all that He's done for yes, me today. I know that it's because God has given us the ability. You know that makes me rejoice inside. Yes, Amen. You know I like that, and so, you know each and every one of us have a job to do. Find your place. Find your place in God. Know what it is That's that you right. need to do. That's right. Know where your place is and do it well. But we can't stay away from this filling station here because this is oh, what this is. It's our pit stop, man. And I'm telling you, without this, we I'm like you. I don't I just don't see how this can make it. I don't. Because somebody, it may be him, but somebody may have something to say that would lift me. Yeah. Oh my. And just like her, she's going through a lot right now. She needs the word. She needs to be lifted up. She needs her hands held Absolutely. up. And that's our job to do that. Amen. That's I our job. That. And if we're not here, we can't do it. That's right. Oh yeah, we can pray it on. I'm not saying that. But we need to be here in body. I absolutely agree with that, Mr. Carroll. I believe that. This is our pit stop, guys. Yes, 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 yes. This is our pit stop. This is where we get new tires. This is where we get gas. This is where we get encouragement. This is where we get fixed up when we fall flat on our face. And you've hit the wall. Bam! You've hit the wall, and it's just wiped out the whole side of you. It's like, oh, I don't even think I can get picked at the pit stop. How am I going to get back there? How am I going to get back? And you just roll in barely alive. And you know what? They go out of there. Full of gas, new yeah. tires, and the body bands come in, and they yank out everything, yeah, and they're ready to go. Let's go. That is the important right. place is. to be, yes, right is. here. Right. You've got to enter in, so and if you don't right. enter in, you go out of here. You know what? doesn't do any good for a race car driver to pull into the pits and pull right out. That's right. He better get something while he's there. <laughs> Very few. I don't think I've ever seen any of them pull into the pit stop and just leave. They don't get tires. They don't get gas. They don't get anything. I just want to stop and say hi. Any times they change their mind, got up. Yeah. But you know, most of the time when they go there, they go for a purpose. For a purpose. I need something. When you come into the house of God, I know you need something. Sure don't leave here well, empty-handed. Don't uh, leave here uh, out of gas and no tires and the whole back end of your car sagging. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. You know, when you come into the house of God, get all you can. You better bet when that driver pulls in, he wants everything he can get. That's right. You give me everything I can get in 12 seconds. Uh -huh. When you come into the house of God, get everything Amen. you can. Amen. And you know what? Make him proud. Make him proud. Yes, oh, make him proud. When he looks down, he says, oh, there's Sister Valerie. Oh, she's such, I just love her. Oh, she's so kind and sweet. Oh, Sister June. Oh, I can't tell you enough about Sister June. That's she's right. just so wonderful. Oh, yeah. I can imagine in heaven how he just beams when his children oh, yeah. enter like in. Sure. And he says, oh, Pat, oh, Brother Pat. Oh, my God. You, you, did you see what he did last week? He's talking to the but angels. I love him in here. Talking to the angels. <laughs> but I love him in here. <laughs> he's talking to the angels and he's so proud of you. Oh, Sister Daisy, I, I know she's going through a conflict, but you know what? My grace is sufficient. Yes, yes. My grace is sufficient. All is well. I will carry her through. Yes, he will. My love, my mercy, my compassion, yes, I'll carry he her through. It doesn't matter what it looks like to the world. It doesn't matter what it looks like to the world. I thought Jeff Gordon won that race last week. <laughs> Wrong. One bad move. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if you have physical problems that come against you. It doesn't matter if it's financial. It doesn't matter. you got to know that you 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 know. Because when you know, you know. That's just all there is to it. <laughs>
Children.